What's up everybody? I know it's been a long time since I posted a project, but I've been working really hard this semester, both at work doing machine learning stuff and at school trying to survive. Uh, but I got a pretty exciting project to show you today, so let's get started. Oh yeah, that's right. I got a new robot arm. So I used to work for the company that makes these, uh, U-Factory, and this is called the U-Arm Swift Pro. But it comes with more than just a robot arm. It also came with a laser cutter. How cool is that? So before I tell you about my project and what I ended up doing with this robot, let me tell you a little bit more about the robot itself. So I already mentioned that it's accurate to 0.2 millimeters, meaning that I can go to the same spot and be 0.2 millimeters within that area. Um, it's, uh, they've swapped out the old servo motors for steppers, so that means that the, uh, the movement, it's uh, you know, a lot less jerky, and there's less backlash when it's actually locked in place. Um, they have this nice little I.O. in the back, which I think is very cool. The whole base feels a lot better. There is some rubber on the bottom to keep it from moving, which was always my qualm with the UR metal. And the, uh, the head is a detachable, so I, I haven't screwed it in, but you can move the head out and put a different head in, and it comes with a uh, suction cup gripper as well, which has another servo at it, giving you a four degrees of freedom robot. But that's not even the coolest part, because you can actually swap this head out for a 3D printer head. So this, this head can um, feed plastic in through there. Oh, I think I actually have it backwards. So it feeds plastic in through, uh, through here, and melts it, and then you can 3D print with this robot. It's that accurate. All right, let me show off what I worked on. So this was a uh, semester-long coding project. Now, it wasn't semester-long because it took a semester. It was a semester-long because I had so much other work to do that I couldn't work on it entirely. But it's this, ta-da, it's this UI that I just opened up. So what is this? That's a it's a great question. That's what I'm here to tell you about. This is a Turtle Graphics um, user interface controller for the robot. So before I show you this, let me explain what Turtle Graphics is and how it usually works. So what is Turtle? Turtle is a Python standard library, which is really meant to teach people how to program. Uh, so the first program people usually make in Turtle is just a simple line. Um, and so turtle, right, I forgot. Turtle is usually an object, right? So I'll call my turtle Alex. And so you instantiate the turtle, and then you can do things with it, like tell Alex to go forward. And when you run it, you the, the line will, will draw a straight line going forward, and, um, and then you can tell it to go right or left or do various things. And from the perspective of that dot, which is the turtle object, it will um, you know, turn right 10 degrees, go forward however many units you want it to do. Um, and the idea being that you can then teach program flow in a more complex way um, to make more complicated things instead of just copy pasting code. All right, everybody, now that I've shown you a little bit about how turtle works in the real world, let me show you how it works in my world. So this is my UI. Um, on the left, you type code here, right? All around here, you can write your code. When you press play on the left, it will run that code. And in this case, it'll fail because this is not actually valid Python code. Uh, and it will generate whatever you write here. But then, once you've decided you're happy with what you got there, you can go ahead and press play on the little robot play icon, and it will actually draw that out with the laser cutter. So the syntax is the same as I showed you, turtle.forward10, let's make it make a, uh, a square. So that's not right 90 degrees, copy paste this, oops, copy paste this four times, and we'll just, uh, we'll, we'll take a look at what that looks like, right? So you see the square that appeared right here. Um, now you might ask yourself, well, what, what does 10 mean? What kind of unit is that, right? Um, well, since the robot kind of works in millimeters, but it has this weird working space and because uh, it's this like circular arc working space, I didn't want people to have to deal with that. So I kind of abstracted that away, right? So if um, my, my program will take whatever design it ends up generating and um, squeeze it down into a working space that will fit with the robot. So ignore these units, just thinking of them as a relative.
And there you have it. That was pretty easy to do. So um, I'm not going to be doing a whole turtle tutorial here, right? But I want to show you just a quick function you can do to make some cool stuff. So let's start by making a function that can make a polygon. So def polygon. So to make a polygon, first you need the turtle. So we're going to pass the turtle argument into the function. Then you need to know the number of sides that the polygon is going to have. So I'm going to do number sides. So that's just going to be a parameter for the function. Now, lastly, you want to know the length, right? The length of each side, so side length. Um, so now we, we do a for loop, right? Because you're going to do something for every side in the polygon, right? So for i in range 0 to num sides. And then for every side, you're going to turtle, you're going to move forward, turtle up forward, uh, for side len amount of distance, right? And then you're going to turn, uh, and if I remember my high school geometry correctly, you're going to turn the inside angle of each, each one of these is 360 divided by the number of sides. So I've made this function. It's, it's cool, it's good, but I want to use it. So I'm going to call it here. I'm going to say turtle. I'm going to make a hexagon with an arbitrary side length. So, all right, so let's run this code. You can see it makes a hexagon just fine. We can make that a pentagon or a quadragon, or as one might call it, a square, triangle. But my point is you can really scale this up and have some really detailed designs just from a very simple functionality, which is why I like turtle a lot. So we're going to make this, we're going to use this polygon thing to make a cool spiral thing. So for i in range, and let's just do like do something long. Like, well, let's, let's do this 10 times. So that's kind of cool, right? Let's see what the robot thinks of that. Check that out. It's a little bit small, so got a little bit shaky there. Um, that's my fault. I should really work on my kinematics a little bit more. But that's a cool design, and all it took was a couple lines of code. All right, everyone. I got one more example for all y'all. This is called a dragon's curve, and uh, I'm not even going to bother going over the code here. It's not super long, but you know it is kind of a pain. But essentially, the dragon's curve is a fractal. Um, and you can definitely recommend looking it up. I'll put a link in the description. Um, but I'm gonna here. I'm gonna show you an example of one with ten iterations. Or uh, let's do let's do ten iterations. So here you can see the iteration number. Um, and then I'll probably do something. Actually, print one with seven or eight because it's a bit too crazy. All right. So that's a bit what it'll look like. All right, let's see how it did. There you go, guys. I ended up doing a 10th iteration dragon curve, and uh, so it got really compressed because the work area is like that big. But it actually looks pretty good, just like the real thing. All right, guys, thanks for watching. And uh, as always, the code is in the description. And if you like what you see, please subscribe because I'm gonna keep making these videos and it's boring when no one watches them. Thanks.